So the Game Awards happened not long ago. First things first, congrats to Baldur's Gate 3 for winning Game of the Year. There was little doubt in my mind that that game would win, and I think it's very well deserved, but there were also some incredible nominees up there. It was just a good year for games in 2023, and that makes me very happy. There were also some cool announcements at the Game Awards, for sure. Uh, some ones that stood out to me include a new trailer for Metaphor Re Fantazio, the fantasy persona-looking game. Uh, Ragnarok, God of War Ragnarok, getting a new DLC Valhalla, which is free DLC coming out on December 12, 2023. A new gameplay trailer for Hellblade 2. The graphics look pretty insane. Sega announced a bunch of like classic IPs coming back. Jet Set, Radio, Shinobi, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Crazy Taxi, and more. That was like a really pleasant surprise. Dragon Ball's getting a new game, Sparking Zero. Visions of Mana got announced. A new Mana game is awesome. Kojima came out with this new horror game for Xbox Cloud Gaming called OD. Uh, he like stepped out of the very same door as the one seen in PT, which uh, could be a hidden message of source or just him uh, just kind of uh, just being cheeky. Uh, but it's going to be a game, a movie, a new form of media all at once. And Jordan Peele is going to be collaborating with them. So curious to see how that pans out. Black Myth Wukong got a new trailer, which looks awesome. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth got some new footage that shows uh, teases of some potentially pivotal scenes. Uh, and we got a world premiere for Blade, Marvel's Blade, being made by Arcane Leon, makers of Dishonored. I'm pretty excited about that. I think Blade has definitely deserved a video game of its own. Hello Games announced Light No Fire. The makers of No Man's Sky, Sean Murray himself, came out and made some lofty and ambitious promises. We'll see if he can realize those or if you'll repeat the mistakes of No Man's Sky. Final Fantasy 16 is getting some new DLCs. And then the big finisher was Monster Hunter Wilds. And I'm a Monster Hunter enjoyer, so that was really cool to see. I wouldn't say there was anything at this show that really like took me aback and blew me away. There was no real like showstopper, I'd say, in terms of game showcases. But there were definitely some cool announcements here and there. There's some stuff here that's definitely got some people excited. Now, the other side to this whole situation is the awards ceremony. The show is called the Game Awards, right? It's not Winter Game Fest, but a lot of people are complaining that this feels more like a space dedicated to game announcements and ads and whatnot, while the awards are almost like a a thing on the side, like an annoyance that we have to like rush through uh, to get to the main event, the uh, ads and announcements. And the most egregious example of this is this right here. This is the teleprompter telling speakers, people accepting awards and whatnot, to please wrap it up. And they had very little time to actually speak. As Stephen Totillo highlighted here, for those curious, Game Awards winners are given 30 seconds for their acceptance speech before a Please Wrap It Up sign starts flashing. He then added additional context upon further review. The Please Wrap It Up that goes up at 30 seconds is static at first and then starts flashing 15 to 20 seconds afterwards if the person is still talking. Still far less time than developers who are announcing games and given to promote their projects. Basically, recipients of awards were given less than a minute to speak while while those announcing games were given pretty much all the time they needed. And same goes with like celebrities who came out to promote their movies before actually announcing the winners of the awards that they were representing. And developers in particular are frustrated about this and have spoken out en masse in response to this situation. So Monica Lee, for example, a game producer, tweeted, Game Workers tries to thank fellow game devs or tries to talk about inclusion and representation meaning so much in games. The Game Awards, please wrap it up. This tweet went viral, 1.1 million views, 33 3,000 likes, and the original tweet that she's retweeting showing the teleprompter, 6.1 million views, 57,000 likes. So this is a situation that's definitely been spreading far and wide, and that's becoming common knowledge at this point. And it's a discussion worth having because the Game Awards are becoming sort of the big gaming awards event. It is becoming an important staple. The Game Awards now have a certain level of importance behind it. You know, it is becoming the de facto ceremony for video game celebration on a yearly basis. And so it's important to evaluate it and see where things can improve so that games can be represented and celebrated in the most appropriate way possible. And it feels like there's just a lot of room for improvement. I mean, before the Game Awards even started, there was the whole controversy surrounding Dave the Diver being in the indie game category, despite the fact 
that Dave the Diver actually had a publisher behind it, a lot of money behind it. Uh, indie games are supposed to be games that are made outside of the traditional, you know, publisher uh, format, and that's just not what Dave the Diver was. It should not have been in that category, even though the game has like an indie look to it. It wasn't actually an indie game, so stuff like that didn't help. But now seeing the developers get so little time on stage to actually talk about and celebrate uh, the fact that they won this prestigious award. I mean, it just, it really is unfortunate. Brian Altano here noted how retweeting this IGN uh, tweet about how Christopher Judge as a joke was almost played off immediately when he came on stage. That's pretty much kind of what was done to developers, he pointed out. They did this as a joke at the start of the show and then just did it for real to every single game developer afterwards. And part of the speculation is that the way developers were given so little time to talk was like an overcompensation for how long Christopher Judge's speech went and went on for almost eight minutes. And their people have broken down exactly how much time was allotted for winner speeches. 10 minutes, whereas trailers and ads received an hour and a half worth of time, and presenters received 42.5 minutes worth of time. And look, I get that hosting a show like the Game Awards requires sponsorships and ads and whatnot to make some kind of money to actually be able to make the show. These things do cost money but there's gotta be a better balance. Right now, things are so far skewed to not awards, but rather to these ads and uh, to these you know, celebrity endorsements and whatnot that it's losing the spirit of what the show is supposed to be. Now, you know what's inexpensive while providing something premium? The sponsor of today's video, Raycon, whose earbuds and tech products are as high quality as they're affordable. Beyond recently having expanded their business with the introduction of Raycon Home Tech and Raycon Power Tech with useful new products like the Magic 180 cable and their faucet filter, Raycon has aimed to disrupt the electronics industry by proving that you don't need to break the bank to get great audio pumped into your ears in a convenient, compact, portable, and premium form factor. I myself have their earbuds, which I've used at home, on the go, in the gym, you name it, and I've been really happy with the crisp, balanced, and bassy audio they produce, sound quality that's comparable to other products and tech brands, but starting at only half the price. These earbuds also offer a lot of convenient functionalities, with the buttons on each side allowing for a wide variety of media playback and smartphone functions, all while being comfortable, lightweight, and unintrusive. For added ease of mind, they're not only water and sweat resistant, but they also offer a whopping 8 hours of playback on a charge, with a charging case offering an additional 32 hours of battery. For the cherry on top, they come in a wide variety of colors to fit your style. And with the holidays coming up, it's the perfect time to take advantage of Raycon's ongoing holiday sale to purchase and or gift their universally useful products with various bundles featuring kits of Raycon devices providing even more value. There's something here for just about everyone. Get premium audio and power tech at a great price this holiday season by going to buyraycon.com slash yongye to get 15% off site-wide. There are also musical performances, which is fine in all 13.5 minutes. I know the Alan Wake 2 one got a lot of great fanfare. But then you look at the fact that award presenters got more time than the winners did, 26.5 minutes compared to 10 minutes. And that's kind of crazy. Award presenters, including celebrities who went on stage and, you know, try to be funny and try to do a bit and try to promote their movies and stuff like that. They never got the please wrap it up sign. They were given the spotlight and all the time in the world. Next up, we got Raj Patel here, who also did some math as to how much time was actually allotted to award winners. Last night's award show was three and a half hours, 210 minutes long. Interestingly, if you include the pre-show, the total runtime of awards, acceptance speeches, 13 awards, is just under 12 minutes total acceptance speeches were a minuscule percentage of the entire show. The speedrun portions, 19 awards, add up to about 4.5 minutes total. The segments where developers didn't even get to go up on stage, accept their award or their trophy, and give a speech, but rather it was Jeff Keighley just bringing up a list of nominees and just like blurting out the, uh, the winners and just kind of rushing through those. It's crazy some of the categories that didn't allow developers to go up and talk. Best RPG and then Best Indie didn't get a spotlight. And Game Awards can be a, a great champion for indie games to highlight you know, the best that we've seen in a given year but they just brushed that category, which a lot of people were not happy about. But yeah, by Roger's estimation here, roughly 16.5 minutes out of 210 given to 
awards and the like and to speeches and developers to celebrate games and that essentially accounts for less than eight percent of the entire show and people are wondering at that point can we really call the show the game awards rather than you know winner game fest which is why we're seeing so many headlines like this one right here from pc gamer that reads developers blast the celebrity laden tgas as an embarrassing indictment of a segment of the industry desperate for validation with little respect for the actual developers. Let's now see some of the feedback and criticisms that developers had to share on social media and the like. Here we have Josh Sawyer, who is the studio design director at Obsidian, you know, Fallout New Vegas, Pillars of Eternity, Pentiment, you name it. He had pretty uh, blunt words to share, stating this year's The Game Awards is an embarrassing indictment of a segment of the industry desperate for validation via star power with little respect for the developers it's supposed to be honoring, which is what PC Gamer quoted. Here we have Jessica Harvey, who's a game developer also garnered plenty of likes and views uh tweeting it's great how the game awards are treating the award winners like they're an inconvenience getting in the way of all the paid ads lmao it really does feel that way the way the teleprompter said please wrap it up after a mere 30 seconds might as well be telling the developers at the game awards your award speeches are not that important please move it along so we can get to the main event not the awards, but rather the game ads. And look, part of me understands that having these huge game announcements at the Game Awards does attract a lot of people because beyond the awards, they can expect potentially some kind of bombshell to drop that makes everyone hype. But the volume of trailers and announcements, especially for stuff that's already been announced in the past, but just got an extra trailer for the Game Awards, that wasn't really mu much of a bombshell. Like that's when things start to get egregious, when that stuff takes priority over the point of the whole event, which is to award games and developers. I'm not saying don't have any game announcements ever or any ads whatsoever and only have awards and speeches. All I'm saying is, again, there can be a better balance of those elements and you could strive to give developers more time to speak. Even an extra minute for each developer goes a long way, and you could stand to not rush through certain categories and give those the spotlight that they deserve. Here we have Javiera Cordero, a game developer, who said, if I won Game of the Year and was dedicating the award to a member of my team who had died during development and saw the words, please wrap it up, I'd be fucking pissed. This isn't just a hypothetical, that's exactly what happened. The folks at Larian, when they were accepting their Game of the Year award for Baldur's Gate 3, were talking about members of the team who passed away, and they were given a freaking timer. Like, that is incredibly disrespectful and dismissive of the efforts of the developers and the fact that some just unfortunately perish along the way. And this is the Game of the Year award we're talking about. This is the main award category, and they were also allotted very little time to just thank everyone and to memorialize those who uh, you know didn't make it it's also worth noting that sven vink was supposed to announce during his acceptance speech for baldur's gate 3's game of the year award that the xbox version of baldur's gate 3 has officially launched but he never got the opportunity to do so the way he tweets here makes it sound like he forgot to do that but i think it mostly had to do with the fact that sven was so rushed that he either forgot or just literally did not have enough time to make this announcement a lot of developers are also highlighting how much time was wasted by celebrities or bits who try to you know get a laugh out of the crowd and whatnot cat manning here developer tweeted personally i love doing prolonged unfunny bits rather than listening to game devs talking about their work referring to situations like the way simu liu took up a bunch of stage time so chris voiceman tweeted the following simu liu tortured us for what felt like ages with a shitty joke so he could advertise a game but an industry legend was practically whisked off stage with a giant cartoon cane because he dared to speak for more than 30 seconds what a joke referring to the fact that ag anuma freaking zelda's director and the guy who led the team behind the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom one of the best games ever and one of the best games this year he was given the prompt to please wrap it up after 30 seconds. And it's worse in this situation because Aonuma needed more time to make a speech because he only, you know, he mainly speaks in Japanese and he needed a translator to convey what he wanted to say. So the fact that he was also just given 30 seconds or a little less than a minute is ridiculous. Here's somebody else who tweeted about this. Uh, Cosmonaut said, Anthony Mackie was blabbering for like five minutes with no interruption and telling people to like shut up and stuff like that uh, as a joke, but still. But people who actually won awards for their games got like a minute before getting played off. Disrespectful. This tweet garnered, you know, 4.9 million views, 107,000 likes. And, you know, IGN itself like posted this compilation of Anthony Mackie doing his bits. Hey, hey. Stop it! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! 
look, I have nothing against Anthony Mackie, and I know he was just trying to, you know, to just make some entertainment happen on the stage or whatever. But the fact that Anthony Mackie was allowed to do this for a couple minutes while developers who are there to genuinely share their passion and their gratitude, they're just told, hey, no, 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 not enough time. It's insane that we are giving this more of a priority than developer speeches at the Game Awards. Even folks who aren't developers spoke out about this. Here's Mike Drucker, who is an Emmy-nominated TV writer and comedian. He said, if you make games, you get 30 seconds to talk at the Game Awards. If you make movies, you get five minutes to talk at the Game Awards, which, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of what happened. This was in response to someone who I think accurately conveyed that, you know, I watched the Game Awards. It seemed to be very embarrassed about being a Game Awards show. Some folks are noting some of the speeches in the past where they were given more time and how we might not ever get moments like that. For example, here we have somebody who tweeted, if the Game Awards continues down this path, the moments like that dragon cancer's acceptance speech will never happen again. No world premiere is worth losing this. And there's a developer who, you know, very emotionally conveyed gratitude for all the support that he got in making a game, but also talked about like the losses that were experienced along the way people he lost family members that he lost and stuff like that and it's like you're allowed to convey that stuff when you know making games can be such an arduous and emotional journey and you know there's a lot of personal stakes involved as well and you know just saying that stuff should be wrapped up and allowing celebrities make dumb jokes and bits on stage you know it's like come on where are we in terms of priorities and none of this is necessarily the fault of the celebrities who come on stage per se it's just the way this event is organized and what's prioritized it's the folks who are spearheading the game awards the heads of the game awards who need to just reprioritize things and give developers more time certain game announcements were also criticized like kojima coming on stage with jordan peele to talk about od and look I love Hideo Kojima, and I think it's always really cool to see what he's up to, but the imbalance of how much time he and his Hollywood friends got versus the amount of time developers got to speak, it's just way off. So Zalman here appropriately pointed out, award-winning creator giving a heartfelt speech that has to be translated into a different language is being told to wrap it up. Meanwhile, Kojima and his Hollywood friends get all the time in the world to talk about a clip that barely qualifies as a trailer. Kojima being given like 10 minutes to do that, while at the Game Awards, the awards themselves get less than a minute to uh, do a speech before you're told to please wrap it up it's kind of messed up, which is why tweets like these are also garnering, you know, over 60,000 likes, 2.7 million views, why we're seeing memes like these that have garnered 68,000 likes and 2.5 million views of, Ko of Jeff Keighley, you know, just being a lot kinder to Kojima and his time on stage compared to award winners like, you know, Alan Wake 2 and Sam Lake, where, you know, they're told to please wrap it up. That teleprompter situation is making the rounds like it, it, it's just because you added the word please in there doesn't make this any less rude and i get we don't want a repeat of a christopher judge situation but they were so aggressive with the way they were telling developers to get the hell off stage that it really does come across as somewhat insulting to what is supposed to be a game award ceremony folks in games me also spoke out here's nick calandra tweeting last thought on tgas is that between the muppets kojima hollywood actors screaming shut up or talking about their broken foot taking up a lot of time that was Simu Liu talking about his broken foot and people like Sam Lake and Sven Vink getting shoot off stage as they give emotional thanks well priorities we're seeing entire articles being posted by people like Jason Schreier who is an investigative reporter but also just talks about general video games goings ons and he wrote this entire article titled biggest video game award ceremony is heavy on promotion light on awards and highlighted that like the rest of the awards winners directors Van Vink was given just 30 seconds to speak appeared to be a direct response to last year's show in which God of War actor Christopher Judge delivered a rambling eight minute speech the limit this year led to some awkward moments Sam Lake the director of Alan Wake 2, which won Best Narrative, were hurried off stage before they could even start thanking their co-workers. This year, show featured 31 awards, but many of them, including Best RPG and Best Multiplayer, were quickly rattled off by host and creator Jeff Keighley rather than presented to the winners. And once again, that also includes Best Indie Game, which is even more tragic because indie games don't have the kind of marketing budget that AAA games do, so they could have really benefited from the Game Awards. And I feel like this was a really missed opportunity to really uh, champion indie games. And yeah, I mean, most of the show was filled with trailers, world premieres, with uh, Hollywood actors like Matthew McConaughey and Anthony Mackie doing their 
thing and speaking their bits and Kojima taking up like uh, six minutes of the total runtime of the show. So less than 10 minutes, but six minutes is still a lot more than what award winners got. Some news outlets like Otaku express the following sentiment. The Game Awards need to drop the act and just become winner E3, or as I put it, winner Game Fest. Now, Jeff Keighley has responded to this particular criticism. He tweeted the following on December 8th, 2023. By the way, I do agree that the music was played too fast for award winners this year, and I asked our team to relax that rule as the show went on. While no one was actually cut off, it's something to address going forward. Kane's journalist uh, Stephen Dottillo followed up with confirmation that having sat two rows behind the person managing the clock via laptop just to the right of this setup, I can confirm there was manual control of when to start the 30 second countdown to the please wrap it up assign manual control of when to make it flash. It was tweakable. So I guess Jeff Keighley did try to loosen things up as the show went along and realized that maybe you know the timing that developers were given to make their award speech was too harsh. But the fact that an oversight like this could even happen highlights that the priorities of the Game Awards are not, in fact, the awards. I understand that you know, hosting something like this, making something like this, a show like this, it's not easy. I'm sure it's a big balancing act, and I don't know all the behind-the-scenes goings-ons. If we're going to give the Game Awards this level of importance, we have to be able to scrutinize it and always make improvements and prioritize the awards aspect. And then to close things off, one other area where Jeff Keighley is being criticized and something that he hasn't addressed yet in articles like this titled Jeff Keighley Shows Cowardice at the Game Awards is the fact that he never addressed the mass layoffs that occurred throughout 2023. Some of the worst layoffs we have seen in games industry history. Nearly 10,000 people have been let go from studios and publishers this year alone. And what was said during the single largest gaming show of the year, absolutely nothing. No heartfelt message expressing sympathy, no appreciation for the work that they've done for the games that were supposedly being honored at the show, not a damn thing. I do think that was a major oversight, especially because expressing sympathy for that situation wouldn't have taken up that much time at the Game Awards. You could have done it in like a minute, just said something to express uh, sympathies and to express some semblance of frustration at the fact that developers are treated like disposable tools rather than human beings, despite them being the ones actually in the trenches busting their asses off to make these games as amazing as they've turned out to be in 2023. So I do agree that this should have been something that should have been brought up, even if it was for a brief time. The Verge agrees, saying that Jeff Keighley let video game developers down as the fact that you know anywhere between six and seven thousand workers have lost their jobs just this year was not addressed with the platform keely has he does have a duty to his audience to recognize the conditions under which the games his events celebrate are made he's done it before with activision blizzard and the whole harassment workplace situation he addressed it very vaguely but at least he said something this year he said absolutely nothing and then you top that off with the fact that the developers who are still, you know, working at the companies and uh, managed to get up on stage and make speeches were told to please wrap it up after 30 seconds and, you know, after less than a minute, that, you know, adds insult to injury at what is supposed to be a game award ceremony, not Winter Game Fest or Game Ads 2023. Game Awards will no doubt continue for years and years to come. And hopefully this is all feedback that's taken in stride because the awards aspect of the show really has not seen much of an improvement throughout the years. If anything, it's seen a degradation. I think 2023, uh, Game Awards 2023, has been the worst case of game developers and the awards aspect of this Game Awards ceremony uh, not being given the spotlight or kind of being brushed aside in favor of game announcements or celebrity endorsements. And we're losing the plot here. And I think it's time to really back in in a big way and really show that this is a game awards show uh, and really like give developers the kudos and praise and the spotlight that they deserve uh, given everything they went through to give us some of these amazing games and all the hardships that they had to face throughout this really volatile year of layoffs and you know in a situation where you know publishers can demand too much uh, from people who are incredibly passionate about their craft. But that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this whole Game Awards situation. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.